Hey team, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I will show you how to use Microsoft Excel and VBA to write a code generator that generates Python code. Learning this skill will make you a more productive programmer and a highly valued team member. I know this to be true because I have written code generators for more than 20 years that have saved everyone on the team numerous hours of tedious programming. I think you'll be impressed. Let's do this. Before you invest a lot of time in this video, let me show you what it does. First of all, we have a sheet here called player. It's got column names, it has data types, and identified the primary key. Now we want to load the VBA editor, so hold down Alt F11. As you can see, the Microsoft Visual Basic for Application has popped up. Here is our program that we are going to teach you how to write. And it all starts off with sub main. Come in there and hit the run button. Notice it generated all of this code here. Let's put that in our clipboard. Hit control A, control C. We have created a project using Visual Studio's 2022. Notice I have a file here called player.py. Click that, paste in our source code code and there you have a time saving generator. You never will have to create another table in SQLite 3 again or write a load comma delimited file into this table. We just used the VBA code generator. I have a Visual Studio's 2022 solution. I have the code I generated here in the folder. Notice I have no additional files other than the project and player.py. And here you can see our comma delimited file and notice it does have a header. Let us press F10 to begin debugging this application. So it's going to get down to the bottom. We're going to get inside of this and sing SQL Lite 3 Connect. There's a name tempdb. And if tempdb exists, we're going to use it. If it doesn't exist, we're going to make it. Let's look at that folder. Notice no tempdb. F10, tempdb has been created. Let's step, step. We're going to step into add player to database. F11. I'm actually going to create this table called player. Remember the columns that came from Microsoft Excel. Now we're going to load that player CSV file into that table, F11. I'm going to insert. This is my pattern, my format. Notice I have four placeholders, player ID, player name, position ID, and annual salary. And then we're going to loop over all the data and insert that into that table. I'm going to scroll down to the bottom and continue and then hit close. And the generated code is all done now. So we can view the contents of temp.db. I'm going to be using a program called DB Browser for SQLite. Notice I went to Google. I typed in DB Browser for SQLite. I hit the search button, this first link. Download, install that, and then we can use that. I've opened up DB Browser for SQLite. Let's open up that database we just created, Open Database, TempDB, that was in the folder we just created. Notice Browse Data. Remember, we had 10 rows of data from our sample file. From our common delimited file, we had Wilson down to DAF. You can see that in here. So there you have it, team. We were able to take an idea from a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet, generate the source code, take a common delimited file, load it into a SQLite 3 database, and then use DB Browser to see the data. So how do you write a source code generator? Surprisingly, it's pretty easy. I created this video about a year ago. It showed viewers step-by-step -step how to load a CSV file into SQLite 3 using Python. In that video, I showed users how to actually do the create table command, how to build a SQL statement, and then do the execute command. As you can see, I harvested the source code from a video I created a while ago. Then I made a few changes which made the app a little better. I then tested the new source code to make sure everything worked correctly. This is now the template for my code generator. As you can see, the source code for this project is at my GitHub account. I recommend you visit this URL to download all the contents. At button number one, that's the URL. At button number two, that's the Microsoft Excel macro enabled spreadsheet that contains the VBA code that does all this generating. 
To load up the VBA programming editor, you need to do two things. First, make sure Microsoft Excel is the focus app, and then hold down the Alt button and hit F11. Once you do that, this program pops up. And there you have it. Let's begin stepping through the source code in Microsoft Visual Basic for application. Notice I'm in a subroutine called submain. Let's go ahead and start running it. To actually do stepping, we'll be using the F8 key. So I get the database name, I get the sheet name, I get the file name, our comma delimited file. I get max number of fields per row, set that to five. And then we're saying call, let's go. Notice let's go is right below that. Now to call, what it's gonna do is gonna branch out of here. And now we're into let go. All of the parameters, database name, sheet name, file name, and max number get passed through. So all of these, uh, in this subroutine, all of these variables are also available. Now right away, we get to see the generated code. Notice that we're gonna debug print import sqlite3 and then import csv and then a blank line. As you can see, this is our generated code and we now have the import sqlite3 and import csv. We are now gonna call our next subroutine called create add table to a database and we're gonna pass in the sheet name. Sheet name was player. Hit F8 to continue. Now, as soon as we get in there, we're gonna set WS equals worksheets in that sheet name. We're using set because this is an object. Now, you'll notice on this one, I'm gonna get the number of fields from this table. Now, what does that mean? Well, if I look at my spreadsheet player, notice I have one, two, three, four. I have four fields. This function will go get those four fields. Let's go there. Notice I just executed it. My count is four. I'm going to assign that to get number of columns. Functions in VBA, notice the name of my function here. To get a return value, I just set its value to the name of the function name. Notice returning an integer here. Hit F8 to continue. And as you can see here, the number of columns is four. So hopefully you see how functions work in VBA. Now I'm gonna go try to figure out, does this table have a primary key? Hit F8 to continue. Now, as you can see here, I'm gonna loop over all of the columns that are in there and I'm gonna be looking in column three and I'm gonna be looking for lowercase pk. You can see a pk here. And this will tell me that this table player has a primary key. I'll meet you on this red line here. And right away it called for a get number of columns. So it got four, it did looping. And what is has pk? It was set to true. You learned in the last function to get a return value, I give the name of the function and then I assign the value to that and it's returning a boolean f8. Notice it will return true and the value for has primary key has been set to true. Now we're going to build the primary key and I'm going to send in has primary key and that worksheet. We set that worksheet here. Hit F8 to continue. Now what I will do is I will also go through that column and see if PK is in more than one column. So if it's in there just one time, I hit the value PK inside of this string variable. If PK exists on two lines, notice I concatenate them together and I put a comma in between there. Let's go ahead and step through this and see what happens. So I'm in there. Notice I found the first column and I assigned PK player ID. Then we're going to keep stepping through here and we're going to go through there four times and now we're done. So has PK is true. Our primary key is just player ID. This is a function. So I take the name of the function name. I put it down here and I assign the value we want to return to the name of the function. I'm going to be returning a string. PK is of type string. I'm hoping you get that now. So here you can see I got my number of columns. Has primary key is true. Player ID is my primary key. And now we're ready to go in there and build our column names. And this can return fill. Now you'll notice right away that I can, re I can process up to 250 columns. I've never seen a table that big. I'm not sure why I created such a big number, but that's what we have. And what we're going to be doing is for every row in that spreadsheet, I will be inserting one row in there that has the column name and the data type and the current state of the comma. 
notice here I'm initializing comma with the value comma. And if primary key is false, and my current row is the last row, I'm going to change that to an empty string. Let's step through this and see this work. So notice my first row now has player, two tabs, and a, uh, an integer. We're going to end up going to get four of these. You just saw position ID come up. And now we're getting the last one, annual salary. And notice it also gave me a comma after this one. It gave me a comma because we have a primary key and I have to add one more element to this array. You can see here I say def add player to database con incur with a colon at the end. So you can see on this next line I'm going to write out cur.execute open parentheses and then three quotation marks. Now here is the number one goal. You remember I called the original one called a template or a pattern. Now I'm going to be updating that pattern with variables. So create table if not exist. See it's got the word player here, but notice I'm actually using a variable now. That variable will be set to whatever sheet I'm using in Microsoft Excel. And then the columns. Well, inside of this one, I'm using four column names. It's possible when we process our next table, we have 10 columns. It'll loop over all 10. So those are different, but it still goes up against my template. And now for all my columns that I'm putting in there, remember this one did have a primary key and that was player ID. So I'll be printing that out. And then we finish it up by closing the create table command and then putting our three quotes and a close parentheses and then connection complete. Let's step through this and see how that works. And there you have it, right down the middle, just as we expected. This is our current code generation. Now we're on to create CSV load table. Let's go ahead and step in there. And the goal of this is I'm going to initialize these arrays I have defined here with the values. Let's take a look at the generated source code already. Notice that it says def load player, but let's get to where it's kind of complicated. Notice I put all the name of the fields on one line, all the question marks together, and all the entries. Now I kept telling you about this max number of entries per line and we're setting it to five. And you can see here the max number is less than five. Now if, say I have 30 columns in this table. Well if I didn't put some logic in there you can imagine this line goes way to the right and I'd have to do what's known as horizontal scrolling. Well I don't want to do that. So I want all my code to line up nice and organized so I can read it at just a glance. And that's what we're about to do in this routine, write the source code you see here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a breakpoint at this debug line, and then we're just gonna go in there and look at these values. I'm gonna run that, I'm at there, so that means all my fields are populated. So let's go in there and say like, uh, let's view this watch. And notice here we have our three fields. We have question, field names, and field. Let's look at question first, that'll be the easiest. Notice, because I only have four fields, I have the four question marks and the close. That makes sense? And if we look at the generated code, we can see that it's that part of the line. Now the next field is gonna be field names. And notice it's player ID, player name, position ID, and annual salary with that close. You can see how I did that here as well with that close parenthesis. Our last array to look at is fields and notice it's the entry. Remember in that tuple I have entry sub 0 to 3 and there's a close parentheses and you can see here on line 37 we have our tuple and we have our entries 0 to sub 0 to sub 
3. So I hope that made sense to you instead of me stepping through there and trying to build that just so you could see the output. I'm just trying to make things organized. And now what we're going to do is we are going to generate the rest of this and you'll notice in this immediate window the source code going there. I'll be holding down shift and F8 so this program is workable. Notice I'm going to start off with define load the sheet name as player and let's go ahead and print that and then I'm going to print a blank line and then then with open file name you see that and then our reader line for the comma delimited with the delimiter as a comma and then we're going to print a comment out and then we're going to skip the first row because it is a header row and then notice here I'm going to say statement equals enter insert into sheet name which is player this will be the name of our columns that's coming from the array field names see that and now we're going to be looking at the next statement I'm going to be printing the question marks you can see that right there nice and now we're going to begin the looping over that no notice it says uh, for entry in reader let's go ahead and continue generating code here then I'm going to build my tuple and then once we get done with the tuple we're just going to keep coming down and we're going to execute that statement and then we're going to commit and then for every try we have an accept I'm going to print out what the user would see if there's an error and guess what team we are all done with the second method Let's now call the subroutine build underscore underscore main. Let's do that. F8 gets us in there. And then here, you can see that we are just going to do debug prints all the way down. We're going to check our file name. What does our file name come in as? Look at that. There's only one backslash in each of the uh, separators. So we actually need two. So we're going to fix that. And then we're just going to keep printing this out. Let's uh, step through this and do that. Ready? F8 to continue. And you can see the code generating to the right. You see the file name just got reformatted with two backslashes. We're now done with that subroutine. We're back to the end of let's go. And we're back to the end of main. Guess what? We're all done. And there you have it team, a VBA code generator that generates Python code. I hope I made this look easy and you are able to start writing your own code generators now. If you'd like to share, that would be cool. If you have any questions about this video or other comments, please leave them below. Until next time, take care.